Welcome to Sailing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Those that are preaching righteousness, the true, real Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him, is showing to his servants things which must shortly come to pass, since signified it by his angel unto John. John in the last days in the spirit of Elijah, for the heavens must receive Jesus until the times of the restitution of all things. That is, that the reason the Elijah ministry must take place in restoration. But not only that, remember my servant Moses, Malachi 4. Why? Because God is going to famish all the gods of the earth, Zephaniah 2. Why is that? Because he's uncovering the seed of work. So those that are walking in the light as he's in the light, God said, if they receive you, they receive me. If they kept my word, they'll keep your word. But the, the assumption is that we are walking in the light as he's in the light and a preacher of righteousness, which is the present truth. Now, he that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the righteousness is only one, and that is Jesus Christ, the Jehovah Tendishkinu. How did that righteousness there, we partake of the righteousness of God by faith. And it's through faith that we are partakers of his holiness, of his divine nature. So, those that are preaching in the last days, though you may be discouraged, you think, well, they go to church, everybody thinks they're saved, sanctified, and on their way to heaven. Increased with goods, have need of nothing, clothed and fed, as a Laodicean church. And God said, Knowest thou not, you're poor, wretched, naked, blind and destitute. I counsel of thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, realizing there's going to be birth pains coming upon the church, the beginning of sorrows. But most of the church world and the worldly church do, do not believe that. Because Mr. Babylon, the great mother of Harlot, says, I said a queen, I am no widow, and I will see no sorrows, no birth pains, no trouble, trouble, tribulation, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that we might be accounted worthy of the kingdom of God for which we also suffer. Their travail, the beginning of sorrows, is kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. And this is earthquakes and uh, uh, famine, pestilence, sword and noisome beast. Wars, rumors of wars. These are the beginning of sorrows, birth pains. And that's the reason why that we are not only called to believe on Jesus, but also to suffer for his name's sake, because it is in these sufferings, trials of our faith that it brings forth pure gold. So count on a joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Though your faith be tried as by fire, it can come forth as pure gold. And the trial will be upon the earth. O oh, earth, 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 hear ye the word of the Lord. It's the time now that the true ministers of God, the ministers in righteousness, proclaiming the real Jesus, will be outnumbered uh, there, and the worldly church world will come against those in a man's house that will be those of his own house. They'll preach peace when there is no peace. Jesus said, you think I come to send peace on the earth? but rather a sword, the son of man at variance, the father against the son, the mother against the daughter, the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law, and a man's enemies or foes shall be those of his own household. That's a civil war, and in the church, destroying and devouring one another, that Paul said, take heed that you do not speak one against another, malice, envy, strife, and hate, lest you be devoured one of another. That's exactly what will happen in the last days, each denomination thinking they're right and everyone else is wrong. In John 16, Jesus said, I have forewarned you that you should not be offended. The time will come they're going to live you up out of the synagogues and out of the churches, casting your name out for evil, saying, let the Lord be glorified. But the Lord will appear for your joy. And he also stated that even some will be killed, thinking they did God a service. Now, that's certainly a misconception of the truth, thinking they killed you that they did God a service. Well, why did they do it? 
because they have not known the Father nor me, Jesus said. They don't have the real revelation of Jesus Christ. And the whole judgments of God is to reveal the real Jesus, the Christ, that there is only one God and one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who's above all, Father of us all, and in us all. Jesus Christ is that God, is that Father of glory, is the Son of God who is the Father revealed. The whole judgments of God are are to reveal that. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light, Jesus is a blessed and only potentate, 1 Timothy 6, 15 and 16, the omnipotent, the almighty. He states that several times in the word of God. He said, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come, the almighty, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, omniscient, God almighty, who only hath their mortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, nor see, nor can see, 1 Timothy 6, 15 to 16. Because we have hewed out cisterns that can hold no water in the Trinity doctrine and these ecumenical synods, and counsel that have made the word of God in effect. And because of that, God's judgments are there to get us to return to him. And those that are preaching the truth, and you feel discouraged, you feel that you're all alone, and just as Noah, notice the preaching of righteousness. And we see that in Genesis 6, that Noah was a man perfect in his generation, And that is walking in the truth, walking in the light, and that present light, a man of righteousness. And that righteousness is imputed by faith, which is the divine nature of God, that we come, which is called holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We must come to perfection to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, because he's coming back for our church without spot and without blemish, perfect in all of our ways. And we must be presented blameless at his coming, both spirit, soul, and body as the body of Christ, as it's fitly framed together, whichever measure of every point, part, a measure of faith given to every part, members in particular, that every joint supplies to the edifying of itself and love through the supply of the spirit. That is present truth that we must heed in uh, these things, which are the things of faith, which must shortly come to pass. It is certain, and it will happen. This he said and signified it by his angel unto John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, there are preachers today, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, we find that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. When we see there in the Hebrew, the 11th chapter, the faith chapter, the household of faith, in other words. We see uh, Hebrews 11, verse 7. Notice those ones that as it was in the days of Noah. Well, Noah was a preacher of righteousness, and it states there, by faith. Well, that's a righteousness of God by faith, not of the law, lest any man should boast. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be saved. Israel made that mistake. There, though having a zeal for God, but not according to, not according to wisdom. Well, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, uh, not seen as yet, it only dude upon the earth and had not rained. And there would be, had been no flood, no water upon the face of the earth. And certainly not that would drown mankind and all the beasts of the field, etc., Well, because men had become so ungodly, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord because he stood by faith and was a righteous man. Because of that, in the present truth, believing God that the Lord spared Noah, and he is the eighth. Now, person in the word of God is written in italics because that was not in the original manuscript. Noah being the eighth, of which eight souls were saved by water. Now, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. But this time, the earth is not going to be destroyed by water, but reserved against the day of judgment by fire. Our God is a consuming fire. And that is the present truth in the Word of God for those that have an ear to hear. 
You may stand alone for a while. That's the reason the body of Christ needs to come together in the unity of the faith, not denominations, and they will never see it. It's only the righteous that will see it. The wise shall understand these things, but the wicked cannot understand. Daniel 12 states that. And at that time, the body of Christ will come together, compacted together, and the every measure of every part. The measure is a metron, a measure of faith. And the eye can't say to the foot, I have no need of thee, because God has put the more abundant honor on the less comely parts that there should be no chism or division in the body. In division, those that sow discord among the brethren, holding that they have the truth and they're the only ones going, will not make it. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. God's doing it now. He is pulling those out, coming out of Babylon, that say, I said a queen, I am no widow, and I'll see no sorrow, no birth pangs, no tribulation, no, no great tribulation at all. And God said, there's a sifting going on among the nations. Not the least grain will fall to the ground. God's sifting the chaff from the wheat. Those that serve God versus those that do not serve God for or against him. And he's doing it with the nations. He said, not the least grain will fall to the ground. Not one that are in the Lord Jesus Christ in truth will fail, will be lost. But he states the very next verse, Amos 9, 10, I'll destroy all of my people by the sword. Well, many say there's peace and there is no peace. And the sword reacheth unto the soul. Jeremiah stated that. Prophet to the nations. He said, Lord, it is as if you have deceived this people, saying, Peace, and behold, the sword reacheth unto the soul. And Jesus stated the same. You think I come to send peace on the earth, but rather a sword. That's a cherubim of glory at the east end of the garden of God, alone with a flaming sword. Genesis 3, 24, to keep the way of the tree of life. Well, that is, uh, in the face of Jesus Christ, we see the four faces, the four carpenters that will rebuild the earth, and that is Matthew, he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the face and the glory of Jesus Christ. It's the glory of the Father, it's the glory of God. And Mark, he is the perfect man. In Luke, he is the suffering servant, the ox. And where the crib is clean, there is no increase. And an increase comes by the strength of the ox. And then, of course, John. And that's the eagle. The lion, man, ox, and eagle that we see cherubim, capital C, there in Genesis 3.24, which is Jesus Christ alone. He is. That one that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He's always been God. He is not a man that took on a spirit. He is the spirit, the spirit of God, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. He is the El Shaddai. He is the Elohim. He is the Lord Jehovah Yahweh. He is the Law through the Tav. He is God. He has always been God and always will be God. But he made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant. He is the Spirit of God that took on flesh as a man, worked salvation in and of himself alone, fulfilled his own law, and uh, took the ordinances of that law and nailed it to his cross, thereby breaking down the middle wall of partition in his own body of flesh and blood, and went back to his former glory, glorified with the Father's own self. He did it not for himself. He's always been God. He did it for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Paul said, we've lost, I've lost the loss, suffer the loss of all things. And do count it, but dung, that I might win Christ, not being found, having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God by faith. Now, grace reigns through righteousness. And we have to be ministers today of righteousness, understanding progressive word of God, the proceeding truth, the proceeding word. Man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And Jesus stated, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Albeit this time, it will not be by water, it will be by fire. And God has promised in Hebrews 12. And all through the prophets, he stated, 
that yet once more he shakes not only the earth but also heaven, that all that can be shaken may be removed as the things that are made. Any man-made doctrine, the deucing spirits and doctrines of devils will be destroyed, will be removed. And those things that cannot be shaken, those are the things of faith, may remain. That's the remnant of our seed that keeps the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, the church that's come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto perfection. Seeing then that we have a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God with reverence and godly fear. So you ministers, now the gospel of Jesus Christ and the believers that are holding to the truth, knowing the signs of the time of Issachar, be encouraged. You, as David did in the caves of Agilom, have to pick yourself up by your own bootstraps and be encouraged because the Lord is going to do a work, a strange work. Bring to pass his act, his strange act. Stand for it. Warn the people of God. Let this terror not show my people their sin. Lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone. Not a trinity, not a binary, not a tunis doctrine or a oneness doctrine. The Jesus only doctrine of Christ, the true Christ, uh, that doctrine of Christ that if any man abide not in that doctrine, he hath not God, 2 John 9. When that dove was in the days of Noah, there's a voice here in the wilderness now crying the same thing. There's a destruction coming. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound alarm in my holy mountain and cry alas, alas for the day. The day of the Lord cometh, it's nigh at hand as a destruction. From the Almighty, so shall it come. We're making right now chambers, priest chambers that we can enter into through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in proceeding truth, the word of God, in present truth. And without us going in and making these chambers, the priest chambers, where there's nothing to enter into, there's no ceiling. Enter thou, my people, into thy chambers. Hide thyself a little while until mine anger, that's God's anger, ends in there, the northern army, Assyrian's army, destruction. For out of the north, a great evil shall befall all the inhabitants of the land. It's strikingly close as we see Israel and their Iranian proxy and all the Hezbollah and Hamas and all that to destroy Israel, and it's not going to happen. And we're warned of this. But at that time, we're in the last of the last days. The Lord has stated, seal my people by my word. As I send the angel from the east heaven to seal the living God, so send I you. We receive that word. The 19th of January, 2019, to those that have an ear to hear. God's doing it now. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, you must stand and you will be alone. You will feel like you're alone. But God will take pleasure in you. And that is, lift up, spare, not show my people their sin. What's a sin? It's iniquity. Not being led of the Holy Ghost into present truth. That's iniquity. And not all that saying to me, Lord, Lord, will be blind or in, even though they were little children. They had believed the Lord Jesus up to that point, but because they didn't follow on to know the Lord. They didn't follow on to know the truth. They had started the race and they were in the race, but they didn't finish it. Because of that, he said, not all the same be Lord, Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, having the revelation, the true revelation of the real Jesus. Some will not still be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they did not do the will of God. Even though they had the spirit of God, they didn't obey it. They didn't obey the voice. Well, Noah did to the saving of his soul. Notice in Hebrews 11, as it was that he's the Noah, God's doing the same now, except instead of a flood of water, it will be a time of a consuming fire. And that in Hebrews 12 states that the Lord hath promised yet once more. He shakes not only the earth, but also heaven. We see it in Haggai too. When he does that, the desire of all nations shall come, and he'll come to us as a rain, the former and the latter rain. At that time, it's in the seventh month of tabernacles, not Pentecost. We've been in Pentecost and holding on to the old store too long. Now God's doing a new thing, and very few are listening. Those that have an ear to hear will move on and make themselves new wineskins, 
the whole the new wine, the new thing that God is doing. Otherwise, uh, the, the old wine skin will perish with the new wine and will not be able to contain it. That's where we are today. There, they said uh, that if the Lord hath promised yet once more, I'll shake not only the earth, not as I did with Moses, bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. That won't even come into mind in this great last day work that God is preparing to us right now in the body of Christ to receive for the saving of our souls. And that particularly is the, the body of Christ coming together in the unity of the faith and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and to a perfect man. And to the knowledge of the Son of God is a perfect mirror image of Jesus, not just knowing him after the Spirit, but in full glory. So our God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Four faces, there's Genesis 3.24, lion, man, ox, and eagle with a flaming sword. Not peace, but a flaming sword. That is where we are now. And uh, at that time, to keep the way of the tree of life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But now, he says uh, in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, God has shown forth his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earth and vessels that the excellency of the power might be of, our, of God, not of ourselves. It's not of us. It's not of our righteousness. But it's of God, the righteousness of God by faith. And that is, the Lord is that spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17. We have this treasure in earth and vessels, and we know that revelation. The Lord, that is Jesus Christ, is that spirit. Not spirit, junior, not a second person of God here, but God himself. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. What's that? The perfect law of liberty. That we all, with open face, beholding is in a glass, that perfect law of liberty, are changed into the same image, not, not partial knowledge, not seen through a glass darkly, but full knowledge of Jesus Christ. Going from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You ministers that are preaching the truth and the body of Christ receiving it, if they've kept the word of the Lord, they said they'll keep your word. The ones that are standing for truth, there is a battle. The devil does not want it. He knows that he has but a short time. He will be cast out of heaven for a time, time and a half, three and a half years, 42 months, cast down to the earth. Oh, earth, 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 hear you the word of the Lord. And uh, there at that time, having great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time. Those last three trumpets, the fifth, sixth, and seventh trumpet, is not the last trump of God. Those are three woeful trumpets, but there is a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, which is the last trump, but it's not that seventh trumpet, as most teach. There is those three, there, there are three trumpets, they're woe trumpets, but there's just a time that that's the beginning of sorrows, a time of great tribulation, a time of winter, a time of snow, a time of hail, God fulfilling his word, Psalm 148. Those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Those that are in Noah, notice what uh, Paul stated in Hebrews 11. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen as yet. Well, we haven't seen this new thing yet, but it's upon us now. God revealing and sealing those for the work of the ministry, judgment to the line, righteousness to the plummet, to those that have an ear to hear. And he said, as it was there, here it is, that Noah moved with fear the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. We are preparing that testimony of Jesus, uh, that ark, which is the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, which is the faith that was once delivered to the saints. We see that in Hebrews, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we see that in Revelation 14, 12. The ones that are redeemed, uh, they keep the commandments of God because those who love God keep his commandments and have the faith of Jesus. What's that? Have the faith of Jesus is uh, they keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, 10. That's where we are. That's the present truth. Much higher than Pentecostal glory. It's with king, priest, and we see the word of the Lord coming to Zerubbabel. And that we have in the podcast in Zerubbabel. Don't miss it if you haven't heard it. That is the present truth that we're going into now. Check it out. We'll see here that Noah, 
moved with fear, and he prepared that ark. That testimony of Jesus is that spirit of prophecy. That's the ark there in the days of Noah, 300 cubits long, the number of the man-child revealed in the earth, 30 cubits high. That number is the 30 pieces of silver, 30 the number of the high priesthood, 30 years old that he enters into his priesthood, Jesus being about 30 years of age, and 50 cubits wide is the work of the Holy Ghost. There we have that ark. Those in the last days, it's the man-child birth caught up to God and to his throne in Bible numerics. Not only that, it says uh, that he was a preacher of what? A preacher of uh, righteousness, an heir of righteousness. Notice he said, by faith, being warned of God of things not yet seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. We're preparing the priest chambers now that we must enter into to hide ourselves until the indignation be overpassed and God's anger and in their destruction, not ours. We will live. And it says, by the which, notice, by obedience to God, the obedience unto righteousness is a preacher of righteousness, that he condemned, notice what it says, by the which, in obedience unto righteousness, that he condemned the world. All it takes is one man that is preaching the true word of God in the proceeding word and in acting in obedience and preparation for the saving of his soul and the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy by which we understand the words of the book of this prophecy that read and keep the sayings of this book and the revelation of Jesus will be saved. But by doing that in obedience, it will condemn the world, their ungodly works, their ungodly deeds that they've committed, uh, their, the ungodly being convinced of all their ungodly deeds, which they've ungodly committed. God's doing it now. So those that you're hearing the word of God, you're hearing it and you know it's the truth. God's bearing spit with, uh, witness with your spirit that it's the true word of God. We're coming together in one. We need to hear from you. We're with many of you are calling now. And uh, by doing so, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a matter of some is. And so much more as we see the day approaching. It's approaching. We can see the hate for Israel. Hated of all nations for the name's sake. Not only national Israel, but the church as well. Jesus stated that. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21, you'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Those are the ones in truth, the church of the living God, not national Israel, not those uh, after the flesh, but we're talking about this Jew, he that is one. He is not a Jew that is one outwardly in the circumcision of the flesh, but he is a Jew that is one inwardly and that circumcision of the heart in the spirit, whose praise is not of man, but of God. Romans 2, 28 and 29. God's doing it now. By your obedience under righteousness will condemn this world. God will have a seed counted for the generation of Christ. And that generation will preach this everlasting gospel to all the world for witness in all nations. And then the end will come. And it will condemn the world because of obedience under righteousness, which we have done turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, children to the fathers, lest God comes and smite the earth with a curse. We're doing that in obedience. So be encouraged. Just as Jesus said uh, to the ones, the mighty works that had been done in you, Capernaum, and they had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they were a long time ago repented. And it says that even Bathsheba, because she believed the words of Solomon that she will stand in judgment against the cities out there that did not, did not hold to the truth and righteousness will stand in judgment. What I'm saying there is that you, your ministers, the body of Christ, the true believers will stand in judgment and condemn the world because of obedience unto righteousness and God will call you to stand in the heavenly court there in the judgment of the people, white throne judgment, simply because you have obeyed unto righteousness. And that's the same way with Noah. Same way with the ones 
that have obeyed and hear the voice of the Lord will be the instruments that God will use and stand in that court in the heavenly court when he stands on his and sits on the white throne judgment, judging everyone according to their works. And the books will be opened. So be encouraged. Stand for truth, no matter how hot, no matter how much tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake. Don't be offended. And trouble and tribulation was going to rise for the word's sake greater than ever before. But be encouraged when they rail on you because you stand for the truth. They'll hate you. But leap for joy. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. The Lord will reward you accordingly. And that is your Issachar. Your heart, your reward. He's your buckler. He's your shield. He's the Lord. He is the Jehovah Tendiskinu. He is your righteousness. And he will reward you accordingly. Well, if this has uh, been a witness to your spirit, well, we'd love to hear from you. Write to me, Dennis Spirit Post Office, Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Please give us a call. The country code is 1 plus. 903-746-4885 and leave a message I'll get right back to you as God's bringing uh, those uh, that labor among us that we are to know them and come together as one and you can also drop a line a message to us or a question on sealinggodspeople.org sealinggodspeople.com or dennisbeard.org well thank you for your prayer for support Generous sovereigns whereby I can keep the podcast on the air coming to you. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus.